So before we even begin with the tutorial, I just wanted to show you real quick where I got the VDB pack from. And it's from this amazing website called Jenga FX. And when you scroll down a little bit here, you'll find this cloud pack and you just hit on download here. And that is literally all you have to do. You don't have to worry about anything, just extract it and put it straight into Unreal Engine. So here we are in Unreal Engine. And before we start with the actual tutorial, I just wanted to show you what I actually mean by these VDB clouds and what I've already done here. And it's these pretty simple uh, stylized looky fluffy clouds. And it's not the best solution we have yet. I'm still like, this is still like somewhat in development and it's still like pretty early on. Uh, I think there are way smarter people that can help me out here to build even a better material that can be even better for this sort of thing. But for now, this is the solution I've found out to, to work and it actually provided me with the best results. When you're importing these VDBs, make sure that uh, I'm going to import two variants today. You can import them all. Um, just You can leave everything as is here, but just pay attention to this RGBA masking with attributes A and attributes B. And you can see there are no G, B and A, so it's only masked in the attributes A red channel. At least this, at least this uh, cloud VDB is. So others might be something, uh, something different. Uh, and this is where I kind of got a little bit confused following other tutorials about this and I discovered this a little bit while digging uh, for my own, but uh, this should work nonetheless. And it's just mask on the art channel. And when you click import, just let it import nicely, click again import, everything is the same. And we have these two things. Now. What the fuck are even these? Like, what you, we cannot drag them out in the scene, we cannot do anything with them. These are something new called uh, static sparse volume textures. And the way we import them into the scene is by using these uh, heterogeneous volumes and using a proper material for them. And that material we're gonna create right now. So just get a material and call it somewhat M underscore, I'm gonna say clouds or something, whatever you feel like, honestly. And we're gonna open it up. Just open it up here, place it wherever you feel like. And the first thing we need to do, uh, let's just fix this up a little bit. Uh, the first thing we need to do is material domain should be volume because these uh, sparse volumetrics only works with volume materials. The second thing is the blend mode should be additive, as it says here. When you're anything else but additive, it always says volume materials must use an additive blend mode. So just use additive blend mode and that's it. So uh, let's begin by simply adding a albedo. And how I'm going to do that is I'm going to click four on my keyboard and left click to create a constant here. And I'm going to promote this to a parameter and I'm going to say uh, base color or scattering color, scattering color. I don't know. Uh, people have different names for this. It's just for me, it's base color. It's the most basic one. And I'm gonna put it to white, and I'm just gonna connect it up. Now, the main thing is happening here in the extinction and the emissive color. So the extinction value here is how we're gonna actually get that sparse volume chat texture, whatever it is into the actual material or scene or whatever. So you need to get a local position and now this will make sense in just a bit. And you need to subtract this with something called object local bounds. And uh, what we're doing here is getting the UVs for our sparse volume texture. Once we have this object local bounds here, uh, we should use the min here and plug it into the B and then divide. Uh, if you press D and left click, it should end up with a divide node. Divide this with extents. And now we have a UV and we need somewhere to plug it in. So what we need is a sparse volume texture sample parameter. That's a long one. You can name this whatever you want and I'm going to name this clouds. And as you know it, we're just gonna plug this into the UVs. Nothing nothing special here, really. And now attributes A, you will remember attributes A and attributes B when we were importing the clouds themselves. 
that we, if we want to use the cer certain attributes from those channels, we need to actually mask them. So we need a component mask here. And since we only have the red one, we don't have the green and blue ones for this specific volume of clouds, I just uh, mask the red channel here. And what we want to do next is just bring out a multiply by pressing M on the keyboard and left click. And then we want a scalar parameter now. And how we do that is press S and left click. And now we get to name our parameter. And this is density intensity. No pun intended. Uh, and I'm going to keep this something low. I don't want it to be 0. So 0 0.3. And this value will go into extinction. And uh, this is missing input texture. And this is very important. Uh, it will it will work even if you don't put it in, but this error is just kind of annoying. Just go back here to sparse volume texture and place your cloud variant and the error will go away. And now if I save this, uh, I'm just going to save it real quick and show you everything. So if I save this and go to this little button here, and for this we need the place actors panel and type in hetero... Yeah, heterogeneous volume, if that's how it's pronounced. Uh, the problem with this one, if I kind of focus on it, is if you grab it up, you can see uh, it's it's really nothing in here, pretty much. You don't even know what this is. And you can just see it there, that's an icon. But if we drag this cloud over here, when it prepares the shaders, we should see a cloud pop up. So it just has to bake the shaders. It's completely normal. It takes a little while. This is a VDB and it's quite a new standard feature. And as you can see, we get a pretty good cloud. Now, you can see one thing that can be pretty annoying. And that is that we have a base color and it's white, but this is nowhere near white. As you can see, this is just some weird coloring here. And we want it to be white um, uh, white clouds without it being... Um, we want it just to be white clouds without like actually fiddling with lights and stuff like that to actually achieve that kind of look. So instead of fiddling with lights, uh, we should actually mess around with emissive color to get that kind of stylized white look, which we were able to in the previous uh, version where we used a specific plugin, but in this one it's still kind of experimental and I haven't found a better way the, than this that I'm going to show you to do this. So basically what we're going to do is pretty simple, nothing, nothing complicated here. Uh, we are going to grab a multiply, node again, M plus left click, remember it. And then we're going to grab another scalar parameter, again, S plus left click. And this is going to be emissive, uh, emissive intensity. Let's say that. And I'm going to put it at 1 for now. And what we're going to do is we're going to actually multiply this once more. But this time we're going to multiply it with our density here and put it into the emissive color. And now, especially when, yeah, you can see it already turned white right as we wanted it. And now if we uh, go to create material instance, so mi clouds test, let's call it that. And uh, let's put it up here. Pretty simple stuff. And let's put it in here. Uh, now we can actually tweak these parameters, and I can say 1 for the full density. I can even say more if I want to, but that kind of makes things look weird, as you can see. We could, You can always experiment with these, it's, it's up to you, honestly. But emissive strength is what kind of keeps this uh, thing going. Just don't go overboard with it, and don't go too small with it as well. And basically, that is uh, that is it. I'm going to leave the density at 1 and this at 1.5 or something, because this is the look I like. 
Um, we can also tweak the base color. Uh, although I do leave it like this, but you can uh, get like some shades of blue in there, or even if you want to go wild, some other colors even. I don't know. Uh, it's it's a pretty good thing. I hope to see more support for it as the time goes. The only problem with this uh, with this little uh, setup I have here is that we are indeed losing some of the some of the details there. So if I type in zero in, zero emissive intensity, you can see that there's a lot of little detail here that we are kind of losing by just multiplying this this way. If I do this. And that is one really unfortunate thing because in the previous version with the plugin I was able to not lose most of that, de that detail and still have a white cloud with emissive. But I hope there somebody will maybe help me with uh, developing this material further or maybe it gets more support from Unreal Engine itself and gets uh, more options that we can uh, play around with. But all in all, this is a really, really good... Uh, good plugin and a really good feature that Unreal has brought up and I'm really enjoying using it and if you go into like perspective in the scene I'm creating I'm actually relying heavily on these clouds as you can see and I'm gonna even add more of them and it's just an overall absolutely amazing feature and again if you know uh, a, so a certain someone that can help me with uh, creation of a better material or you know how to help or you know already a tutorial that's made feel free to leave it in the comments and I hope this video helped you at least a little bit to create those amazing scenes in Unreal Engine and see you next time.